So what helps to heal this, and what I found from my research and the people that I spoke with in long-term recovery is connection. Connection is the bridge to healing addiction. So when we look at it as trauma, trauma is causing the changes in the brain. And then we have the, um, and then we have the, the actual taking of the substances. And this could be anything. Addiction could also, it doesn't necessarily have to be drugs. It could also be sex addiction, shopping, whatever we do to try to alleviate an, a, like, a not, a, a not good feeling within ourselves. So any of those types of escapist tendencies that, cause, that give us short-term relief but long-term harm, cause long-term harm, is classified as, as addiction in Gabor's definition. So if we have that, we have the, the trauma, we have the escape from pain by using the substances or shopping or whatever, we have the isolation, the stigma of what it feels like to not be able to control our own behavior, and now we're just pulling back and isolating ourselves more and more. What can heal that? How is there a way out of that? And the people that I spoke with in long-term recovery, including Tommy Rosen, who started Recovery 2.0, it's a movement to help people live healthy and active and thriving lives in recovery, was the answer is connection. So that's connection to yourself by coming back into the body, using yoga, using meditation, using any sort of physical practice that can help bring you back into this body. So at the moment that you're feeling that awful, I want to escape, I'm feeling pain, I'm, I'm feeling insecure, I walk into a room, I don't know anyone, I'm, I'm terrified. This is bringing back this flood of traumatic memories from my past. If you can take moments, and we can teach people that struggle with addiction to take these moments to do deep breathing, to get back inside their body and allow that feeling to pass, to acknowledge a sensation, to allow it to pass, then you're reconnected with your body and it's moved through you and the impulse to use is lessened. So we have that connection to ourselves, to our own bodies. And then we have connection to community, to others. So getting involved, becoming active in a community that gives you a sense of purpose, that gives you a sense of what you're doing really matters, is another way through addiction and it's another way to help stay in recovery. So we have these two ways to connect and then the, other, the last one is purpose. So if you can help people find purpose, if people can find meaning for their lives, then there's a reason for them to be here and there's a reason for them to say no to using the drugs that they know are gonna draw them back into this place of, of insanity and, and, and complete chaos. What's happening in Portugal, I think, really reiterates this. In Portugal, they, they're doing this um, study with addiction because they had such high rates of addiction in Portugal that they, they stopped imprisoning drug offenders. They stopped imprisoning nonviolent drug offenders. They released them from jail. And they started to give stipends to small business owners to hire people who had been arrested for addiction. Or not for addiction, but for drugs, and who had a history of addiction. And what's happened is the rates over time, over the past few years, the rates of addiction in Portugal, since they implemented this program of giving people who formerly struggled with addiction a chance at a new life and a job and a chance to connect with community, the rates have dropped 50% in Portugal, which is pretty massive, right? It's kind of huge. And I like to, have, I like to believe that America is on the same course. Like we're moving in this direction of changing the style, changing our way that we look at people with addiction, and the voices are being heard. There's this huge movement with Alcoholics Anonymous, the Anonymous People, the movie that, a uh, documentary that came out where people who had previously been anonymous are stepping forward and saying, yes, I struggle with addiction, this is my story, and they're sharing that with others. So we have this momentum growing, and if we can just be these voices of, these voices of compassion, these voices of connection, these, these people who don't judge other people for the struggle that they're going through or their past, we can also be leaders in the movement toward healing addiction and, and empowering our world. So, thanks. Go for it. <laughs>